So in the last video, we had ended up writing our temperature inside the cube as a double sum of solutions with some constants d, m, n. And so now we need to figure out how we're going to solve for these set of arbitrary constants. And so what we need to do is we need to impose our last boundary condition. And that is what's going to tell us our d sub n m's. So if you remember our last boundary condition was that the temperature u at x, y, and z equal to l at the top of the cube is equal to some constant u naught. So that's equal to the double sum over m and n of the expression that we just had above with the signs in the x and in the y direction, but with z equal to l. So we have a cinch of lambda m n times l. This looks pretty ugly. So how do we actually end up solving this? Well, it looks similar to what we did with a Fourier series, except there's two sets of sums. So naturally what we're going to do here then is we're going to do a double Fourier series. And we're going to do a double Fourier trick in order to find our coefficients. So first let's multiply by the X function. So sine of N prime pi X over L and integrate both sides of our expression above uh, from X in zero to L. So the left hand side becomes the integral from zero to L of the constant U naught times the sine of N prime pi X over L DX. The right hand side, we have our two sums. We have a D M N, which is a constant. And then we have an integral of the sine of N pi X over L sine of N prime pi X over L. And that integral is from zero to L. And then we have other stuff that doesn't depend on X. We have the sine of M pi Y over L and then the cinch of Lambda times L. Okay. So we know how to do these integrals. This integral on the right hand side, well, it's zero if n is not equal to n prime. And if they are equal, you get L over two. So that's awesome. That's really useful. Uh, that'll collapse down our sum in the n direction. The left hand side, similarly, we can just get two L over n pi u naught for n prime odd. And you get zero if n prime is even. So this line that we had above simplifies to the left hand side, which is some constant equal to now we only have a sum over M since we did collapsed our sum over N D M N prime. There's our L over two sine of M pi Y over L. And then we still have the cinch of Lambda M N times L. So this sine of M pi Y over L came down from the previous line because we didn't do anything with the Y direction yet. But we still have this y dependence, so we can't actually solve this equation for our constants d, m, n. So we need to do yet another Fourier trick in order to isolate the d, m, n prime. So we multiply both sides again by a sine function. Now it's sine of m prime pi y over l and integrate that from zero to l in the y direction. On the right hand side, we still have our sum over m, the constant dmn, there's the l over 2. And now we have an integral over the y direction of sine of m pi y over l and sine of m pi prime pi y over l dy. There's still our cinch of lambda mn times l, which is always going along for the ride here. Again, the left hand side is simple. It's just a constant times, well, another constant, 2l over m prime pi when m prime is odd and it's zero when m prime is even. The integral on the right hand side, again, you get zero if m is not equal to m prime and you get L over two if they are equal. So this whole line now simplifies to, well, we can factor out a two L over pi squared. There's an n prime, m prime, u naught. And on the right hand side, our m sum has collapsed down to just one term, the m prime. There's two factors of L over two, and we're still left over with a cinch of lambda m n times L. Note that everything here now is a constant. It's just a number. 
And so we can actually solve this now for dmn. Previously, we couldn't because there were functions involved. But here, there's no functions of x, y, or z. Everything's a constant. So we just move the other junk over and solve for our unknown constants, d, m, n. Or here, we have primes on them. And so you get, well, 16 pi over pi squared, 1 over n prime, m prime, u naught over the cinch of lambda m n times l. But you get that only if n prime and m prime are both odd. If either one of them are even, you get 0. Notice I said or. So if any one of them are even, you get 0. In order to get the non-zero result, they both have to be odd. Wow. OK, that was a lot of work. Um, but let's now put this back into our series expression for the temperature u of x, y, and z. And so u of x, y, and z that we had above, I'm just going to rewrite it first before we plug in for dmn. We had the double sum dmn and the sine of n pi x over l, sine of m pi y over l, cinch of lambda m n times z. And now we plug in our dmn into this expression. And now we have our sum is the sum over n and it's the odd n values and sum over odd m values. And we have 16 over pi squared, u naught over n m cinch of lambda m n times l. And then we have our sine function, sine of n pi x over l, sine of m pi x over l, cinch of lambda m n times z. So this is quite the expression, quite the solution. It's a double sum. A double infinite sum is what our solution is. Uh, but it is the answer to our question. The question we were after was, what is the temperature inside the cube as a function of x, y, and z? This is it. It doesn't get more simple than this. Um, the question is, what do we do with this? How do we understand this? So uh, what I'm going to do function of x, y, and z. So what I'm going to do is plot this on Mathematica for various slices. So here I've just written that double sum into Mathematica. And we're going to make a density plot of the temperature as a function of different slices through the cube. So as I choose this slider, you can see I'm choosing different slices along the cube. As I get closer to the top, the temperature becomes uh, u naught becomes hotter. When I go down to the bottom of the cube, it's zero. And so in between the cube, let me animate it, um, as I get closer to the top, the temperature increases. So it looks like the temperature kind of, um, the higher temperature penetrates into the middle of the cube, but the outside sides of the cube, of course, stay at zero uh, because those were our boundary conditions. So that's one way to try and understand what the solution actually looks like.